In case you did not watch extra this week, you might notice a tiny gray thing in the corner of our chat log. Hi. That's what we call gray vision. It enhances your viewing experience. And fixes my audio so it doesn't freeze. <laughs> With the patented shitty internet technology, you too can listen to Lane talk in our episode. So I go from uh, 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 to talking normally like this. <laughs> I was and I can say, say I can say things like cue the roll call. Oh, sweet. We are live. Mike Zenkaigan. Connect. Loading. Broadcast. Tempered zeal. Bluecaster. Super Ichi. Loud and impulsive. Greycaster. Lay. Spark of courage. The power of dreams. Orangecaster. Global soft perka. Broadcasting hundreds of opinions across the world. Radio Sentai Cast Ranger. On air. Welcome to Radio Sentai Cast Ranger, episode 338. Blaziku and Pokemon Desu. Wheel of Pokemon, turn, turn, turn. Tell us the name that we will burn into the ground. Nope. It's no more Friday night laning. Well, yeah, no, we we, <laughs> we actually had an extended pre-show today. Yeah, because I was late because the movie was long. <laughs> yeah, it was a feature-length film. Someone, Pokemon. Uh, someone, Pokemon, please. Salt episode Soul Rock. That's it, right. Is it Soul Rock? I thought we already did those. No, it was Lunatone last week. I'm double checking. It is Soul Rock. Fuck me. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Soul Rock. So, Soul Rock's cool. For those who may be tuning into us for the first time, welcome. Thank you for checking us out. We are a bunch of Soul of Sun Rocks who get together every week to talk about Kamen Rider, Super Sentai, and a third thing. I was gonna say we were a group of heroes. Oh yeah, that's a better one. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this week we're talking about Conrad Saber episode 31 Zenkaiger episode 7 and for this week's feature topic for uh, Metal April whatever the fuck Gar was calling it Metal April 4 the animation uh, we are talking about the Tiger and Bunny the movie The Beginning which is basically just a retelling of the first half of the show in yeah, a movie my mom really liked it I watched it with my mom and we both really liked it so if you if you like the movie, you should absolutely watch the show. No, yeah. absolutely. Everyone should watch Tiger and Bunny. It is a fantastic series. It's made by Sunrise. It's basically pre My Hero Academia. Which is it's funny because if you think about it, it could you you could argue that it's post My Hero Academia because they make mention of going to a hero academy beforehand. Yeah, you got Sanji as the main character, Wild Tiger. You got Ichigo Kurosaki from Bleach voicing fucking Barnaby. It's 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 great. Yeah. It's just a good show. And they're getting a se sequel in 2022, and I'm very excited. All right. Yeah. So, with that out of the way, let's get into Saber. Oh. Okay, so from the start of this episode, we can confirm that Logos and Sorius are, in fact, in cahoots. Of course! He's a fucking... Logos is the bad guy! Of course he's fucking working with Sorius. No, but I thought he was just in it for himself until we saw him hanging out with Sorius. I didn't know he'd, like, lower himself to working with the monsters. Okay, so, boy, seems... was this was this another emotional episode. My boy! <laughs> On my, my character notes, I had, um, wait, so were Storius and Logos working together this whole time? Like, I, I wasn't sure if that was the case or not either, so... I mean, it was briefly touched upon when Logos let him take the Primitive Dragon book, but I, I thought I... that... It, it sort of seemed at the time like that was just a one-off, but no, in fact, they are just working together. Which is weird, because Can... Lo Logos seems like the kind of guy who'd just be like, ONLY I MAY RULE! So I am the one who books. Well, maybe he's just going to take advantage of them and then throw them aside. That's what I feel like the case is probably. Yeah, no, I've been saying this whole time. Either Logos or Disaster are going to be, like, the main final bad guys in the show. Yeah. Because now, like, now we've seen even even Reika's kind of just being, like, being like, huh, because, like, Logos was just like, shut the fuck up, bitch, and do your thing. Yeah. 
He basically did say that just without the vulgarity. But can we say that one of my favorite things, and it was unnecessary, did not need to happen, but just fucking Zeros just has May kidnapped, and he just, for no reason, just does a backflip. That man <laughs> yeah, will... I I loved the no reason flip. That man will not stop backflipping. He just really wants to show off his parkour skills before they murder him next week. And, and I love Zeus for this, like, so much. He, he's just, he's so fucking angry. He backflips like... when, he backflips when arriving at a scene. He backflips when threatening humans. He backflips when shifting into beast mode. The man so... loves to backflip. So there were so many faces of uh, faces in this episode. I ha I couldn't just pick one. I had to. Ch I picked three. So I got this one because like Rin Rintaro's just been fucking killing it with like his development these past few episodes. So like look look at that look at that face of determination. You get that like on him. Um. Okay. So we got that one. Then we got this nice. Close-up picture of fucking Zeus, which ah! I just thought was hilarious. But you might wish you were dead. And then we oh, haven't yeah, had a May fits. one. We haven't had a May one in a while, so this might be a little depressing. There you go. Oh, why'd you do that? I don't know. You should have done it when she like after she got saved and she turned around and her face lit up. <laughs> yeah, I probably. This this but, episode uh, actually really made me like May finally. Oh, dude, I've liked May for, like, the past, like, five episodes. She's been... She's great. My general impression of her so far has been she's been annoying, but she has had more than earned her place among them. Yeah, she's the positive reinforcement. And even, they even said it this episode. They're just like, man, May's usually the one who really, like, full of smiles and cheers up. And I was like, thank you! Yes. Thank you! I don't think she quite deserves to be a spotter yet. She's... Not quite a no, combatant. No, I don't want her to be a rider, but she's a very good support character. I'd so. rather see Sophia become a spada. No, I want. To, and I'm not joking. I want to see Ren become a spada. Um, <laughs> if I can't have Kento Kun, then I'll be Kento Kun. Be yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm still pretty confident Ren is going down the path of the Megiddo. Uh, but yeah, just, like, Rintaro's still, like, really... Uh, also, God, like, fucking shirtless Rintaro this, most of this episode. I was like, God damn. He's not wearing a shirt. He's ripped. Yep. I mean, I guess it was because just it was probably to show that he's vulnerable and deal Yeah, they were patching up his back. But at the same time, it was a little weird that he was shirtless for the entire episode. But then, like, there's one shot where, like, he has, like, his, like, under, like, clothing he wears under his coat. And then, like, in another shot thing. later, he has his coat on. I was yeah, like, like he, wa he walked out of there shirtless. Then in the next shot, we see him with his brown gi on, not carrying his jacket. And then he comes around the corner to see the fight, and he's got his jacket on. <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel like they fucked up on, like, those shots. It's not, it doesn't matter. No. Uh, but yeah, he he's still fucking angry that like um, that Thomas saved him instead of May. But he's just like, don't worry, we'll like we'll get her back. And he's like, will we? Will we get her back? It's 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 not even just that. That that sort of like is a mislead because he's just angry about how weak and useless he feels. And man, this episode, like these last couple episodes with Rintaro, just I you know what? I'm gonna say it. Best second rider ever for me. Um, he's definitely up there for me. I'll, I'll I'll say that. But my my favorite secondary rider is still uh still G three X. He's I, so like just... awkward and and like detached from society. But at the same time, it's he's so like vulnerable and relatable lately. And, and you just you want to you want to root for him for like you know really improving. So. I mean, everyone Everyone here is going to have their own favorites. I'm just saying, for me, best second rider. Oh, Ar yeah. Argue with me in the comments, y'all. <laughs> Ichi, will, Ichi will argue you to the fucking ground. I love Kage. Remember when Rintaro seemed sus from episode one? I'm so glad we were wrong about that because it came off so funny. Yeah, no, he was just being smug. I he loved was, it. He wasn't sus. He just had no idea how to talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I heard it was rude to walk in into a place with your shoes on, so I rode in on my lion instead. 
Yeah, like that was completely. Yeah, put him. Yeah. That was defending him. Oh, I love him so much. Oh man. Never heard any rules about about not riding in on your mechanical lion. Yeah. It's true. Um, so, meanwhile, with Yuri, a uh, little tiny thing comes up to him and goes, Hey, Tassel's been kidnapped. It's like I was attacked and is weak right now. And he's like, like, oh. Like, Yuri's been gone for two episodes. Did he, was he just sitting in, in Tassel's cottage all that time waiting for something to happen? Well, Tassel usually seems pretty, um, like, uh, what's the right, punctual. Yeah. But... I guess he just decided to sit and wait the whole time. Well, we know that from that one episode, a couple episodes ago, he went to visit Logos, and then Logos, like, shot something out of his book at him, and then he vanished, so I thought that he either killed him, maybe, or captured him, but then, after that, we saw him congratulating Toma for saving the primitive dragon soul, so he's not exactly incapacitated, but... I guess, I guess I guess he's just hiding out in our world because like if he's in Wonder World he's like more vulnerable. So maybe he's like hiding out inside Toma's soul or something. But I was thinking like in his mindscape. He is Toma. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. God, I would love to see Toma's actor just one day just go bon lecture. Bon lecture. <laughs> Decides to possess him. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Um, yeah, so, oh man, Rintaro's just, like, yelling <laughs> speech about being afraid and all, and his losing people, and he almost smashes his sword. Yeah! yeah. But Toma's just, like, the biggest bro of the whole episode. Hell, at one, one point during a fucking fight, he, like, he wields fucking Saber's sword, and I was like, holy shit! That was so rad! He just so grabbed so Rekka! Cool. He, he, he did it with Rekka the same way Toma did it with Ikazuchi. Yeah. Oh. That no, was, it was super cool. That was I love nice. when he did that. And then he does the EI move. Yeah, that I saw that and I actually like was blown away. Like I actually yelled out like "Holy shit!" out loud. I was like, "Fuck!" That was so cool. <laughs> also, I think those stairs that they retreated to after that fight are the it's the same stairs that Heart Medic and Brain used to hang out on. Oh yeah, okay. And then uh, Rintaro challenges Toma to a duel. Yep, because he wants to like prove that he can get stronger and like he can do the th things Toma can do. That's how knights do it, you know. They... Yeah, it's such a nice moment, and it's such a good like bro moment between them, and like it, yeah. it, it, they a good bro moment. Yeah, it 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 gets almost like ten there's some weird tension going on there, and then like Nagare finally properly awakens the same way Rekka has, and the, as they fight. Yeah, and then they just both like collapse onto the ground beside each other, and then their swords are crossed, and I'm like, oh, okay, what are you guys implying here? I get it, Toei! They fucked! No, <laughs> they crossed that's blades! That's not they sword fought. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No. They're, they're obviously just really, like, it, it's a very huge platonic friendship, and I, I, I like it. It, like watching them smile at each other when the swords awaken was actually really touching. Seriously, like all jokes, it, all sex jokes aside, it was a genuinely touching moment, and I'm so happy. Yeah, and then there's like one point later where Kento's just like, he's like, "Huh, I didn't foresee this." Wow. <laughs> like I just, I, I hate that Kento's just so like soulless right now it, like it, like i get it you saw like everything you hold and love dear wiped out no matter what situation what scenario they do but like show some emotion man I think so mean, down things that he can't even it's it there's some trauma going on clearly obviously so it's it's gonna be a while before kento is all right again i think or, or if he's ever all right again yeah <laughs> I don't know. Jeez. Um, yeah, so... Oh, God. Toma Tassel. <laughs> um, oh, no! Yeah, I don't you forgot, know. You forgot, you forgot the mustache and blush on him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they they inspire each other to, to help each other be stronger, and then as they reconfront 
the Neko, Megiddo, and Zuos. By the way, they not ever once in these two episodes told us what the name of the Alter Ride book that May was possessed by was. I don't know if maybe no. it's on the to the TV Asahi website or something. But like they never said the name of the book, and that kind of gotta be me. some kind of like cat related story. Yeah. <laughs> It's like Probably not Puss in Boots. Something, Nick. Well, it's not. it doesn't have to be based on an actual story because she's an animal slot book. Mm. So it's just like something, Nick. I don't know. But, but yeah, then we get like this awesome fucking scene where like Zuos like challenges them and fucking Toma and Rintaro just walk up together full of confidence, ready to fucking throw down. We and this... we just get this double head chain. And so my good. God. So good. And also, Blades finally uses his fucking King Lion cannons. Yes. I I was like, you have like, cannons, you stupid asshole! Shoot them! No, I know, I was wondering when he was going to use those. Oh, there you go. There you go, that's better. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we get this awesome shot of them like talking to each other through their suits. And there's this like weird rune-speak background around them, and that's pretty fucking awesome. And I feel like we should have had this the whole show. Wait, Decker, are you saying that Toma has a pocket dimension in the suit? Well, no, that's just every writer. Every writer has a fucking pulled their thing out of their ass. Every character has that in Rider. Yeah, like, Oz did it. You got to see shots of what Birth's face looked like under the helmet. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, everyone, yeah. So yeah, uh, Rintaro and Toma power up their swords again, and they manage to free Mei from the Neko Megiddo. I know, like at one point, she like she's like honestly ready to fucking give up. Oh yeah, she's like kill me, and that was kind of depressing. Yeah, I but that like that, but I definitely see why it was powerful. And the and the cat Megiddo just kept fucking like lying, being like, "Yeah, she 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 hates you guys. She like she wants you to die. She wants to die. Like she definitely wants to die. You guys clearly lying. Yep. Um. Yeah. So as Zuos is like getting pissed off and he's like on fire, if you pay attention, you can kind of see him starting to shift into his next form that we're gonna see next week. Yep. But uh, Storius grabs the key that May was supposed to be holding on to and whisks him away. So um, that key is going to lead them to the northern base's version of the book that Logos is holding. Also, didn't didn't Logos do like a thing also this episode where he just kind of like oh, stood yeah. up and he was right, like, ah, right, ah. right at the end and he just like opens his mouth and it's just all creepy and like filled with spit like ugh, gross yeah that that was i like uh, i looked at that and i'm just like i i, I will refuse to make that the face of the week because that's just I'm, too creepy i'm wondering if maybe this is a hint that logos isn't human anymore yeah I don't. oh no is. definitely a megiddo yeah no it would god not clicking it not clicking oh, it is it the gross picture probably yeah, it's just yeah, it's a gross picture. Yeah, I'm not looking at it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, in brighter news, we saw it in the episode. Yeah. Um. So after the fight, May like, even though May has been spending the last two episodes like ready to die, basically, the second they free her, she just turns around and and is back to her happy self. And then we get this really really touching moment where they drop honorifics with each other. Aww. Yeah. And then she makes pins for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but the best, though. Like, not even just Daishinji's, uh, Daishinji's looking at his. Yep. But you see Sophia look at hers, and she's like, oh, that's nice. I know. I, <laughs> like, I, I still love Daishinji's <laughs> reaction, and his his reaction was correct. Cause yeah, like, just... <laughs> made him look, he made him, they made, she made him look so fucking creepy. <laughs> just like, oh boy, I love it. Thank you. Yeah, no. You can see Sophia's <laughs> face too. It's just like, oh. And then she huh. even made one for herself. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, she's really trying to, like, because, like, freaking. Like, like, Toma and Ritaro, like, have, like, a promise to each other. And Mace is like, what about me? Don't forget me. I helped. Yeah. Oh, oh, also, oh, also, we got to see, like, the first time uh, May and Toma met. And that was really, that was really touching. Yeah. Because you see, like, Thomas just kind of, like, doesn't care. 
yeah. it's just like, yeah, I'm your editor. And it's like, oh, that's cool. What kind of books do you like? She's like, oh, like this, 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 this. Ha! And Thomas like, huh? Yeah. I actually... like the North Wind and the Sun because I don't like the heat, or she does like the heat. I forget which was which. And she hates the cold and likes the heat. <laughs> it's just like that's not the point of that book. I know, right? <laughs> but i still like it and he's just like oh boy we're gonna get along just well yeah. <laughs> um yeah so we get to see toma may and rentaro together in the ending again that was nice yeah um and next week we get uh hyoju senki and which means zuos is gonna die i ichi i feel like you're gonna get used to that form over time I don't know. The hair doesn't look good, even in the preview. Give, give it a couple episodes. I just want to rip it out. But, yeah, like, Saber has just been, like, I'm I'm glad Rintaro has gotten his groove back, and just wa- watching him struggle with himself was just, like, really well-written, and, like, this show just continues to be, no, like... And, and you, know what, you know what my favorite part about this whole episode was? Mm. after last episode we expected that he would get his new form and use that to save may but this episode proved that you don't need a new gimmick and a new power and a new form to get some progression and development this man experienced his own character development and saved the woman that hopefully actually has a romance with purely through willpower and friendship it doesn't always have to be about the new gimmicks and forms, and I applaud this show for doing that. That's actually one of the first times, if not the first time, I've actually seen that happen. Yeah, and then he gets the upgrade next week. <laughs> cool. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Fucking, he barely used fucking Daisenki, honestly. Eh. I think we saw him use it, like, three times total, like, this whole time he has it. And I think it's more than three, but yeah. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> huh? Evan. Sinking, sinking gold with the mouth. No, get get rid of that. That's yeah. not cool. No. Don't ruin Udamori Genta. He, he was fucking great, great character in Shinkenji. All right. Take us in. Zenkai! Opening shot, Stacy's eating takoyaki, Alan confirmed. <laughs> I was thinking that too. So, God, go on, man. Like, now we find out why he's racist. <laughs> well, like, I mean, I you see because I'm glad that they gave us, he gave us a fucking reason why. Because, like, literally, these first, like, 10 minutes, I was ready to fucking, like, slap him in the face. I was like, dude, I still the kinda. fuck is your actual problem? Oh, he hates Kikainoids because they let themselves be conquered by the Toji Tendo. That's kind of not a good excuse. No, and then his reason for protecting humans is because they're not as tough as Kikainoids are. So he feels like he needs to protect them like all the time. That doesn't mean you go full crossbreed fury on them, Jesus. You can be protective and de- and defend humanity without looking like you want to fucking yiff them. But like, man, no. man like, like Julian, like every episode, like every time I see him in ca- like t- uh, freaking interact with Gao, and I'm just like more uh, taking Julian's side because I'm like, like yeah, man, like, like, so oh, can you can you give me a rag? He's like, oh, sorry, I'm busy. Well, then why didn't you tell me that? I just did. I'm, I'm like, I fucking hate those kind of people. No, yeah, Zuran is best character in the show. <laughs> oh, no, him, him, and him and Vroom are the like Vroom, best boys. Vroom kind of goes a little too far. He's just no, no but he's. And like Majin, like she's funny, but like man, could she be too like clumsy sometimes? <laughs> no, Vroom... I mean I think that's probably the point. But I, I feel uh... like I feel like they're dialed a little too high. They're just too annoying for me right now. And then like I've I've been watching, I've been reading tweets about people not liking Kaido that much, but I I enjoy Kaito. I think he's a swell boy, and I love I, I love his I love his enthusiasm. It's 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 great. Do they think he's too enthusiastic? 
Uh, it just some some people just think he's like really just like they call him like they call him stupid stuff like dumb and like oh he's just like he he doesn't do any he doesn't have any good relevant like personality and I'm like yes he does. I've I've never been a fan of the 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 happy go lucky dumb energetic but not really driven. Well, I mean, if you want that, that's lucky. Lucky is like the fucking. Epi- uh, embodiment of that and who I that's also why didn't, pure red. who i also didn't like so that's my no, point I lo- no i love lucky um but anyways this this episode's more about our boy stacy and god is he so cool I fuck just, i love when Ka- kaito is like sitting with him trying to uh, trying to figure out who he is and at one point he literally goes are you a magi chen <laughs> No, yeah, he's like, a... oh, you were an idol, you're in a band, and he's just like, why the fuck would I tell you what my deal is? You're annoying, go away. Are you a Magic Chan? No, I am a Stacy. Um, and then Kaito and Stacy do a little racy. Yeah. Yeah, no, so Kaito's Kaito's running to go help them because the other like Zenkaijus are in trouble, and then Stacy's just like he run, Kaito runs past him, and then Stacy just decides like looks at him, he's like, I'm gonna race this guy. I'm not losing to this asshole. And then he just like does like he's like kind of being like a shit poster, being like, being like, why are you following me? No, you're following me. No, no, I didn't. Um, what were, you saying, and... what were you saying, Emily? Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying it was kind of weird how he started racing him out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, but um, so yeah, so let's let's get into Stacy, uh, St- uh Stacy Caesar, as as his uh, that ranger was- name is called. So, yeah, like he pulls out that head shape sequence. My god, I fucking love Stay Caesar. Oh, the red is a little weird combined with the purple, but other than that, I fucking love it. And man, is he busted! Like, yep, you, you, like, you think about other people who like summoned heroes like the end and fucking uh Bosco, Bosco. and yeah. I don't think any of them went quite as ham out of the gate as he did because this man literally just went all right i'm gonna summon like a shit ton of mechs and you just have to deal with it shit ton of teams shit at ton once of rangers yeah, the whole yeah. Team, not just some not just part of them but the entire teams because like you could argue that the end and bosco all played comparatively fair when they fought this man just went nope i'm gonna summon them all <laughs> yeah, no, he's 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 really trying to fucking prove something here. <laughs> uh so we didn't get a lot into his character, but it seems like he is in fact half human and he resents his father, but he still works for Ijirude for some reason. Yes, and we find out that Ichirude made uh Stacy's gears and changer based off of Zenkaiger stuff. I mean, so yeah, I, we, we saw I him, love that. Yeah, we saw him working on that last week. Legs. Yeah, but I, I love that. I love, I, I like the, always like in shows the concept of like the villain looking at something the hero has and goes, oh, I can do that and make an evil version of it. Yeah. Like I, I love so, yeah. that in shows. The gear Tozinger and the Ankoku gears. I kind of love it. I might buy that gun. The voice is cool too. Also the fucking, uh, the sound on the crank. Oh yeah. I love it much better than the original. Stacy's uh, but- gun is actually really fun. Thanks, Red Hood. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for a Stacy's mom joke, but I wasn't sure where. It I'm be. in love with Stacy's gun. <laughs> but yeah, the the man's got his own roll call and everything too. Yes. And like, no, the way- hold on, hold on. Impact. You. That's exactly what it is. I was trying to remember what it is. His fucking crank chime is the song from Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, it kind of is. Yeah. I, I was trying to remember what it was. This is a weird feeling now um, that I'm feeling. It's a strange feeling. <laughs> but I liked, I liked he like, I like how instead of like shooting it, he like kind of like shot it into his arm. Like he was like, like injecting himself with something. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. That's so dope. And then like, you see like, he, it zooms in on his eye, one eye. And then like, you see like the like, DNA. Yeah like yeah. fusing with them and then yeah and then of course uh, the form has Caesar! Uh, the form has a fucking scarf so it automatically wins two too. scarves yeah scar- scars are pretty pretty cool. it's your boy two scarves yep <laughs> two scar- I love um, that. and once again the day is doomed thanks to stay caesar stay caesar and remember stay caesar <laughs>
Stay cool, stay Caesar. Oh look, oh look, it's stay Caesar. Oh, and he brought a salad. How lovely. <laughs> I love King of Thieves. It's oh yeah, best Aladdin movie. Uh, um, so yeah, so he summons. The, I like when he summons the Go Rangers, and Kaido's just like, "Oh, Aqua Ranger, hey, what's going on, man?" Yeah, because the Zenkai Red special happened before this, and then yeah, yeah as per this gift, Z- Zuron gets fucking socked in the face. <laughs> right? I was wondering where the slapstick went in this show. <laughs> But I liked I liked when Kaido got to the battle afterwards. Like he just sees them like just beat the mooks, and Jiren's like, "Oh, Kaido, what's going on? We just fished up. <laughs> you're we're late. Good. Yeah, you're late." Um. But yeah, just and then like they fight the Gal Rangers and the Magi Rangers and like uh, get it because the teams that correspond to their gears. And uh, just like Rune's just like, wait, what? Huh? Huh? Yeah. And uh yeah, and then they use the the gallery they use the Kaku Ranger powers, I think, to to fuck off at one point in the battle. Yeah, they they escape the first fight with Kaku Ranger, and then Gaon uses the Gal Ranger gear later to turn them all bestial so they just fight better. Uh but but yeah, so then like Stacy just decides okay, fuck it. Summoning a bunch of mechs, and it's so good. They like he summons like they're toy boxes, and then they like come off the yeah, packaging. That so neat. That like, is fucking brilliant. It's so good. I wish I cannot wait to hear Gar's thoughts on that because I bet he fucking lost his goddamn mind seeing that. It's so cool. So they summon Dai Zujin, Magi King, uh, Dai Bo Ken, and uh, Gao King. Uh, oh yeah, as per our chat, they they did not summon the Zero Rangers, which was weird. They summoned the other teams that correspond to the Zenkaidras, but they didn't summon the Zero Rangers. Though they did summon the Zero Rangers mech, Daizujin. Yeah, and then I like that they like incorporated like their like stock footage of them using their power up attacks. Yeah, they all <laughs> so. shoot off their fucking Hisatsus at the Ranger at the Zenkaidras in like Ranger mode. That should have been fucking like overkill. It must be like um, they must be somewhat weakened from the original final mechs, right? Yeah, I, I, I guess it's because they're imitations. Um, Ichirude and was then, somehow able to tap into the Morphin Grid. And then uh, oh, well, fucking Dino Fury! Apparently, the Morphin Grid was responsible for uh, the Morphin Masters were responsible for fucking everything. Why not? Yeah, the Dino Gems, the Ender Gems, they're all them. Yeah. Um, so I love when the 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 four Kikainoids go into their their Zord modes and start fighting, and then at one point, fucking Daisujin switches into its tank mode. There's the yes. gift. That I was love, great. I love that. Yep. <laughs> didn't need that. Did, they didn't need to do it. They didn't need to happen. But I'm glad it did. Right. It was so. Um, it was so bizarre watching the fucking Mighty Morphin Megazord fighting in modern HD footage. Yeah, and, and like the suits still look really fucking good and everything. So yeah, um, but yeah, and then just like Kaido gets the uh, they get the idea of just like oh well, why don't we get bigger <laughs> like the Zenkaijus? So then they like they 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 summon a thing and they just make a giant Geerlinger. Yeah, I feel like they were intending for themselves to grow even bigger, and I don't know why that was their idea. But when they use the gear, they instead just get a giant gear to linger bazooka. Yeah, but that was so fucking cool, and I'm glad that like they they're able to do that. And like Kaido throws them a gear, and then it turns like super fucking huge. And then you just watch Gon cranking it by himself back there. <laughs> yeah, and like it actually like it like gr- it grounds itself. The the two like uh, display like panels fl- uh, come out of the like the arm thing of the Geardlinger and it like grounds itself and they just fire it and like it's so fucking cool. Yeah. And then uh Gar Gar isn't here to to help us name, but Stacy summons more mechs, which one of them I did notice was the uh uh the Astro Megazord from in space and Mega Ranger. Yeah, this is the shot that we saw in the magazine scan a couple weeks ago. But yeah, he just Stacy just goes, Alright, is four not enough? How about fucking twenty? <laughs> he just overkills it, like major overkills it. he just makes it rain megazords 
And the episode just like, ends. How much fan service would you like? Yes. Oh yeah, no. Stacy Stacy is basically the embodiment of fan service. Yep. Or at least but, a particular kind of fan service. Like, seriously, we, we laughed at his name when he we fir when first got announced, but then like I, I thought about it for a few days afterwards and I was like, you know what? A guy with a with a name like Stacy, he's gonna end up becoming such a fucking badass character, and he already did it day fucking one. <laughs> this man really just walked up and fucking curb stomped the entire Zenkaiger team. I fuck, you know what? This he is more than made up for having a dumb name immediately. So now we just have to wait for two Kaiser. Yep, when we won't have to wait long because he's showing up next episode. And he's after gears, and he looks kind of silly from what I saw, and he dances, and <laughs> he dances, he dances. Uh, but no, I'm I, I'm all for fucking Stacy and Stacyzer, and I, I can't wait for Two Kaiser next week. I think I think he's going to be really fun. So since I said since I made an Allen joke earlier about him eating takoyaki, what do we think are, are the chances of him becoming good later? Uh, I mean, it's possible, but I kind of hope he doesn't. I don't know. I, it feels like he's rebelling against the Toji Tendo, because he clearly has some resentment towards his father. But then the question is, why is he working for Ijirude? He, he, he clearly wants to show he's better than Barashitara. But also his dad doesn't give a shit about him because he's yeah. just like, oh, he's he's uh, you're just he's going to try to risk himself like that, huh? I, huh. Guess, I guess even that kid has some use. So mm -hmm. clearly, Barashitara hates his own son. Yep, because he's a filthy halfy. But yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm looking forward to more interactions with him and Kaito because I feel like they're really gonna like. Oh, they're gonna have a rivalry through the whole show. They're gonna bond very, very well. So Kaito and Stacy, you're gonna racey. I already made that joke. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, Zenkaiju's still holding up for me. I, I I love it. It's it's fantastic. So most of them still annoy the shit out of me, but I'm starting to find things to like. That's good. I'm glad. And yeah, that's the thing. Now the question is, who's the mother? Is it Kaito's mom? Probably. It's probably Kaito's mom. <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah, it is kind of horrible. What do you think, Emily, about Zenkaiju so far? I'm enjoying it a lot. I, it's cool actually seeing all the, just like when watching Zio, except don't worry, I think this is this is a lot more polished than Zio. Uh, just seeing a lot of things I didn't know about because the older Sentai and things like that is, is I think that's pretty cool. All right, all right, let's get into it, our feature topic. Good luck mode. Feature topic. Let's get that out of the way. I am pissed that good luck mode was not in this movie. Oh, oh, I 100% agree with you. I, I was also just sitting there the whole movie, and at the end I was like, wait, what? No, no good luck mode? No Mark Okita? <laughs> oh, no, it was in there. because the... What is good luck mode? Because I've only seen well, I'll explain that in a sec. But there, there was Mark Okita because they had the motorcycle changing mode. Yes. Okay, so because Gar's not here to explain shit, Tiger and Money is an anime that is based around the idea of superheroes with sponsorships. <laughs> they live in a futuristic... You might 1978. Think, yeah, <laughs> some sort of like Neo, New York, Tokyo kind of thing. Someone um, invented the cell phone in the 70s, apparently. Manhattan... <laughs> It, it takes place in 1978, because if you saw when Barnaby went to go visit his dad's grave, it said he died in 1957. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. Wow, I didn't even notice that. Yep. But uh, somehow Manhattan is like a three-tiered city now. If yep. I, if that's what I'm seeing, if I've in interpreted that correctly. Yeah, the series was uh, 2013, made by Sunrise. It uh, I think it had like 25 episodes. And they've announced a sequel series happening in the next year or so, I think. And there are two more movies. So there are two more movies that are a continuation of the anime. Because uh, uh, Tiger and Bunny, the beginning, is just a retelling of the first half of the show. With uh, just, like, 
you know, at least like the introduction of the series, and then it, they added like a new villain and someone to fight for them to fight. Like, Honestly, in... I wouldn't even call it a retelling of half the show. It was more like a retelling of maybe the first quarter. Yeah, okay, first quarter. But definitely had an original villain who was not in the show. And uh, for, but yeah, for that reason, uh, got... I would, for that reason, even if you watch this movie, I would strongly still recommend you watch the show because it is phenomenal. I, Please I, do. I tremendously enjoyed revisiting this this IP. Yeah, no, me too. Um, but yeah, so we have our main character, Wild Tiger, uh, Kotetsu Kabaragi, uh, voiced by Sanji. And uh, then uh, and our other lead is Barnaby Brooks Jr. Uh, voiced by uh, Ichigo Kurosaki's uh, VA from Bleach. Yeah, um, but before we talk about the characters, so the idea with this series is... This is a society where superheroes are not only a thing because of the next mutation of humanity, sort of like <laughs> My Hero next Academia. Mutation. Yeah. They're literally called Next in this series. That Anyone with a superpower is called Next because they're the next evolution. Um, so it's very similar to My Hero Academia. Um, but the idea is superhero culture has become such a thing that it is now the focus of of a TV show called Hero TV where superheroes compete for points by saving citizens and catching criminals. And, and they get paid to do it. And they have paid corporate sponsors, including actual companies such as Bandai, SH Figure Arts, uh, fucking Pepsi is one of them. Pepsi Next, Domino's Pizza, uh, Tomashi Nation. Calvi. Oh man, there's a bunch. And they're yeah, all over their suits. Yeah, so all the heroes we have, we have Wild Tiger, we have Barnaby Brooks Jr. because he uh, he doesn't have a hero name. His his hero name is just his name because yeah. he's he he revealed his identity to everyone. He doesn't care. Um, and then we have uh, Rock Bison, uh, Sky High, Origami Cyclone, uh, Blue, Blue Rose, Rose and uh, Dragon Kid. I always forget about Dragon Kid and uh, Fire Emblem, yes, who like literally <laughs> is is flaming gay as fuck. But it, it's so that, funny. It's so good. Joke. I love it. And I like. And Kelly was watching the whole movie with me, and when she saw that he was sponsored by Domino's Pizza, she fucking burst out in laughter. Yeah. Also, he apparently owns the company that primarily sponsors him. Helios, oh, Helios Energy. There was a mention oh, okay. that he actually owns Helios Energy. Wow. And I watched this whole movie with my mom. Uh huh. And she loved it. <laughs> she really loved it. She As she should. What the second one pretty much as soon as we finished but we couldn't because i had to get i had to get ready for this but um she really liked it her basic verdict is that she thought it was really we watched the dub she thought it was really well acted she really liked the story and thought that the pacing was good even though it didn't feel like it was an adaptation of something like it yeah had good it, it, it definitely veered away from this from the series a little bit and I would actually argue that this kind of didn't feel like a complete movie because, I mean, obviously they had some issues and they didn't work out all those issues by the end of the movie. And, like, there was the whole thing about Barnaby's parents being murdered and the Ouroboros and they'd mentioned it, but then that was never resolved because they thought that doesn't get resolved until later in the show. So yeah. for, for that reason, this movie felt like opening a lot of plot threads and not closing them all made it feel like a real incomplete cinema experience. And I guess that's that has to unfortunately be part and parcel with the format of the movie because it is an adapt quote unquote adaptation of maybe a quarter of the of the first season. Yeah, but like legit people, if you have not seen Tiger and Bunny, please do so. I just despite everything I just said, I feel like this does a very good job of setting up those first few episodes the same way that the series did. Yeah, cuz you got Wild Tiger like he's got his like OG costume because like uh, as we find out throughout the show, like uh he's he's very old old school and old fashioned. He 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 doesn't do his job just because he gets paid to do it. He legit wants to be a hero and save people and he cares more about saving people than winning points. Yeah. So And he's been doing it for ten years apparently. He has and he has a daughter and uh, he had a wife uh too that he was married happily married to, but she uh died of a sickness. So Yeah. 
And he still has kept his secret identity from his daughter. Uh, not his mom, though. Grandma. His mom, his mom knows. His, mom, his, his, mom. Uh, yeah. his, man, his manager, Ben Jackson, knows. The other heroes know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but not his daughter. Um, yeah, so every everyone in this, all the heroes in this show have their have their gimmicks and their personality quirks. Fire Emblem, the, the quote-unquote flaming gay, and he has a bomb-ass car. Oh my god, that fucking car. <laughs> um, we have Rock Bison, who's apparently a friend of Kotetsu's. I, I like that, every, except for the main two, every other hero is like elemental-themed. Fire, rock, wind, lightning, ice, you know what I mean? Uh, posing, po- photobombing in photos. <laughs> oh, right, him. I forgot. Yeah, he's he's like a weeaboo, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, like, the idea... Uh, like Japanese, but acts like he is. Origami Cyclone. Uh, his gimmick is... He he doesn't do much in terms of hero work, but his goal is just to be seen in the background of as much footage as possible. Yeah, because that's all that's all sponsors want. It's just like, oh, we need you to promote us, so just get, get in wherever you can. That's hilarious, actually. <laughs> Yep. They didn't explain that super well. Yeah. Um, so Fire Emblem, Rock Bison, uh, his gimmick is just he turns his skin super hard. So he's Kirishima. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Dragon Kid has lightning powers. Blue Rose has ice powers. Sky High. Apparently his gimmick is not just controlling wind, but also making himself float. And the reason he can fly around is with the help of the jetpack on his suit. Uh, so yeah, they're, I, I also particularly like their, their, uh, their, uh, their real life names. So like Wild Tiger's name is Kotetsu T. Kaburagi. Uh, we have Barnaby Brooks Jr. Uh, Karina Lyle, who's Blue Rose. Uh, Sky High, Keith Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> what a white A uh, uh, Fire Emblem, Nathan Seymour. <laughs> yeah, right. That was, I was amazed. I Apparently love that. that is a pun on Nissan because that is a common thing that they refer to um, gay people as. Oh, okay. uh, Dragon Kid is uh, Huang Pao Lin. Of course, she's Chinese. Uh, and uh, she- Rock Bison is Antonio Lopez. I also love that whenever Dragon Kid's not in her costume, she dresses like the bride slash Bruce Lee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, and then Origami Cyclone is a Russian named Ivan Karolin. Right. Or Karolin. Yeah. yeah. Even though he's a Japanese themed superhero, he's actually Russian. He's actually Russian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. So like you, you have such a good cast of characters, and I love, I love the animation in this series because like it's just like it's two D, but then all the the when they're in their costumes, they're like this like three D two D. CG. It's yeah, like the CG kind of thing, and it's it's really neat. And uh, but like fucking Wild Tiger and Barnaby suits are just mwah. They're they're fucking gorgeous. I'm not a so fan cool. of I'm not a huge fan of Tiger's design, but I think Bunny's design is fucking good. Oh it's no, so Bar- good. Bar- Barnaby Barnaby is my favorite character in the series. Uh, uh, like I like his character because he gets a lot of development in the series. But like, god damn it, is his costume so fucking cool? But uh, in terms of costumes, my favorite has to go to someone who is actually not in this movie except for in the end credits, and that would be Lunatic. Yes, Ivan the the lawyer. Ivan. No, no, by, uh... no, 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 Yuri Petrov was his name. Oh, Yuri, that's right. My bad. Uh, Ivan is Cyclone. Yeah, Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, there's some. There's my favorite suit is in the main show. So you, if there's some more reason for you to go watch it, uh, well, but yes, uh, Wild hold Tiger on, Barnaby. Em- hold on, Emily, were you trying to say something? No. Well, which suit uh, is your favorite or hero? Um, I also, um, in terms of costumes, I think it's interesting that the that the men tend to be more covered up and the women are more like just sort of out there like the men have sort of an iron man aesthetic they are they are inspired by traditional superheroes yeah that's fair um i actually really really like dragon kids the ender powers that's cool the the big circular mickey mouse like ears on the head are a little weird for me well they're 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 lightning conductors little billboards yeah i feel like we could have done something different with those though um but uh the the great one of my favorite characters who I forgot existed until I rewatched this movie 
was uh, the developer of uh, Wild Tiger and Barnaby's suits, oh, uh, Saito? Saito. The mechanic? Oh my gosh, she was amazing. Oh, they, so, did, they didn't even show off his best moment in the series. Yeah, in so the, the, thing, the thing with Saito is that he, he, he speaks super quietly, like you can barely fucking hear him, but when he's never talking to someone face-to-face, -face, he just screams. He's so loud. It's so, it's so funny. I can't believe they didn't put that in, and it's everyone so must good. go watch that. So it was just like, I saw him, and I'm like, wait, oh yeah, wait, it's that guy. And then he just see him start moving his mouth, and Kaburagi's just like, what? Huh? <laughs> and you then you, like... You hear him if you listen really closely. Oh yeah, but it's it's so fucking funny. <laughs> oh yeah. And also, <laughs> he pretty much... Real? Did they ever tell you more about him? Like, Oh yeah, you you learn... you he, he has his moments in the show. And also, he's basically Edna Mode, because he shows off how old how the old suit and new suit compare in terms of things like being set on fire yeah like he, he he's trying to like he's trying to get like uh, Kota, uh like wild tiger to like fucking understand that like his suit's a piece of fucking garbage compared to his new one and yeah, so he keeps I like fucking displaying yeah. his suits and destroying them and then like kaburagi's just like okay i get it i was thinking like yeah he's quiet male in the mode yeah <laughs> adam mode <laughs> And then he even oh, trolls him by like, oh, looks like in the mode, honestly. A little bit. And then and then they troll that he trolls him with just like, oh, go over to your arm there and press that button. And he's like, oh, this one. And he displays it. It's like, yeah, it tells you the time. <laughs> I installed a secret new feature that will help you monitor your power usage. It's a clock. <laughs> Mom, throughout that scene, she said it reminded her of James Bond. Oh yeah, because gadgets, I guess. Yeah. yeah. The whole uh, thing about about uh, watches that can do everything. Yeah. Um, but song. but yes, as Ichi and I mentioned per, per, uh, before, uh, there was no good luck mode. We will not say what it is because that will leave that as a surprise for if you decide to watch the series. But good luck mode is fucking badass as hell. <laughs> it, it is it is bar none my favorite moment in the whole series. So goddamn awesome. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like, you know, they, they get to know each other and Wild Tiger doesn't really feel happy being part of a new sponsor because like his, his company he works for, uh, they just haven't been making money because he hasn't been earning a lot of points and whatever. Uh, so he gets signed over to, uh, Barnaby's company and we actually see him, uh, we actually, yeah, we actually see him in his suit, uh, like before he gets all of his, uh, his logos. Yeah. So... Was nice. but it was really cool, and they yeah, and they like they say they stopped a, a robbery and like a like a airplane like a zeppelin from running into a boat. Oh, we haven't Did talked about their... that in the in the series. Sorry, is that not in the series? I think it is. I could be remembering oh, wrong. Oh, the, the proto long. suit? I, I don't remember. I think it is. I remember because I remember his his normal suit showing up being a thing that I was like, ooh. Um, but yeah. what we haven't talked about is the, the powers of these two. So these two yes. end up having the exact same power, and that is for five minutes, they have hundreds of times the strength of a normal person. Yeah, it's called the, the hundredth power. <laughs> I so think. they're sort of like Ultraman? Kinda. Kinda, yeah. Except they don't really have a color timer. Their suits do light up while their powers are active, but there's no, like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, and there there's a... But I like that uh, with their suits uh, when like they they like illuminate yeah. when uh, when they're using it, so you can get a good you know when they do that. Yep, so that's cool. Um, but the reason it's called Tiger and Bunny, even though Bunny is not Barnaby's superhero name, is because Kotetsu just thinks that his suit looks like a bunny and starts calling him that, and he's correct. Yeah, he Called Bunny Chan, and like uh, I'm glad they put my one of my favorite scenes in the series. Where he calls him that, and Barnaby's just like, Bunny Janai, Oriwa Banavida. Banavida. Yeah, that's one of those, the bits that Lane and I love the most. Yeah. Also, also, the other bit we love the most from fucking Sky High. Arigato! Soshite! Arigato! Arigato! He just says shit twice sometimes. Yeah, so like Sky High, he has like a jetpack and stuff, and then uh, like I like that Rock Bison, he gets, he gets like catapulted. Oh yeah, they and fucking then launch he's him. He's off by, by a little bit, so... They launch him and he fucking misses. 
and and Blue Rose. She has like these Pepsi Next commercials, just Pepsi all over her, uh, her costume, and then, like her whole shtick is like, She's the "Oh, sexy my one. my heart is ice cold or whatever like that." But your crimes will be put on hold. It's a terrible catchphrase. How, how weird was the pun in Japanese? Like, oh, it, yeah, it's but, like kind of like my ice is in a cold or and your crimes ni horudo. so the rhyme is intact in japanese oh okay yeah, yeah. um yeah the, the the line is terrible and she's marketed as the sexy one also i love the scene where they're at a party and you just see fucking like rock bison just wearing like a tuxedo but he's wearing his fucking the helmet. helmet yeah yeah they're they're, they're hobnobbing <laughs> They're hobnobbing it up with the corporate bigwigs, so they wear suits, but then they just have their CG ass helmets on. And just like all, a lot of the times, whenever you see Cyclone, Origami Cyclone in like costume, he's just either like poking his head out of a fucking corner or something like that. It's super good. The like thing, they stay full true to his character the whole series. What and was it's great? What, what's really upsetting to me about Origami Cyclone's costume is it is a thick ass metal CG suit. But the top of the chest piece is designed to look like he's wearing a monk suit that would leave his chest exposed. You know what I mean? And, then he, and he's got a giant shuriken on his back. <laughs> and he's also terrible with them, as we see during that one shot where he's training. But there, there is an ep- there, there is an episode in the series that kind of like uh, focuses on him and like him kind of just being like, man, I wish I could be fucking better and like do cool shit like you guys do. But yeah, he, he gets his moment. Everyone gets their moment. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's. Uh, so this we got this new villain. I'm kind of sad he didn't have like a villain name. It was just Robin Baxter. Robin Baxter. I, I honestly, I called him. I, I I decided to call him based off the movie called uh, Rollerball. <laughs> my my thought was the Wheelers from Return to Oz. I just think it's funny. Oh his yeah. Name, I just think it's funny his name was Robin because he was Robin stuff. But yeah, his 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 next power is he can he can swap places with people. Yeah, I picked up on that What's way quicker. Stuff? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, was that actually in, on purpose? Probably. But yeah, I picked up on what his power was way sooner than the characters in the movie did. He's clearly swapping places with people. Uh, and then like yeah, we got we got like an introduction scene of like Barnaby and uh, Wild Tiger working together, and like there's this kid who can control statues and. Um, and then I, I love how Tiger like fakes that his power is running out in order to trick the kid into helping make them. Make him hero it up, yeah. That was mm. nice, and I think I remember. I think that was in the show. Yeah, and I liked. I liked to um, and like Barnaby is like captured in the statue's hand, and like uh, he's just it's like, oh, why don't you get out with your power? He's like, oh, I don't want to use it yet. It's not. It's too early. Like I need to get the timing right, and then Kabarak's just like, "Okay, fuck you," and fuck just gets this. out. You're gonna let you gonna you're gonna let me out? Nope. And he doesn't he doesn't even say anything. He's like, "Uh huh," and just <laughs> fucking fucks off. That was funny. Yeah, because like he he thinks he's the leader, like the head of this duo, and then like the the president of the company they work for is just like, "No, you're the assistant to him. You're the veteran. You will teach him how to be a hero." But he calls the shots. Yeah. And like I, I get it. Like it's so unfair. Like you, you, you feel you, you, you cheer for Kotetsu like a lot through the the series because like he, you know he's the victim of a lot of unfortunate events. He's a bu- uh, but, he's a bumbler, but it's not always his fault. Yeah, and it, like he, his his sense of like justice and heroism is just like so fucking strong. Like you feel it every time you see him out on the field it's just unfortunate uh, that the world he is he has lived to see has sort of abandoned classic heroic values yeah we see he became a hero because of uh you know all might sorry i mean mr legend (laughs) you mean you mean fat might fat might (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah all fat would be a better um (laughs) <laughs> well if you like, if you like it, because it sounds like batmite if you watch the series you find a bit more out about esther legend and oh, oh enough <laughs> said <laughs> yikes uh but yeah like he he rescued like uh kotetsu was there kabaragi was there when he was a kid uh during a bank robbery and he stopped uh 
like Mr. Lester from getting shot, and then he like Awakened said like, "Oh, you." He's like, "You saved me, so you're you're a hero now." And then they give thumbs up and fist bump. It was really weird. I call it the thumb bump. <laughs> the thumb bump. The thump. Um. <laughs> and then and then we get a scene where like uh like Kaburagi like tricks the the heroes and Barnaby to kind of meet up with each other at a bar so they can just like get to know each other and like they're like oh well Bart you said Barnaby wanted to meet us didn't you and like get to know us and Barnaby's like I didn't say that and it's like wait what and like they figure out that like uh Kotetsu just set it up so they would all be friends yeah but like they they're, don't give a shit they're rivals they, Barnaby hates them and they hate Barnaby it's not that he hates them it's that he doesn't care because he's focused on what he has to do which you kind of don't really see any of in this movie no it, it, they just kind of make it like other than like one little nod like in the movie they just make barnaby look like this fucking yeah they they, talk, asshole. they briefly talk about how his family was murdered by someone with the ouroboros mark on his hand and that he became a hero to find that person and then they just drop that for the rest of the movie yeah so like the the series this movie doesn't really do barnaby's character justice like compared to the series because in the series like he becomes my favorite character for a fucking reason oh yeah everything oh, yeah. you find We're out just guessing that he has more character development we haven't seen yet yes absolutely absolutely um yeah so yeah, rollerball attacks a fucking theme park or like he gets like stuck in the theme park because he stole like the statue of justice that like is really important and like gets people to like believe in heroes and why, it's worth like billions. Why was the amusement park that this took place at called Big Re? No, Big yeah, Tree. Was it was Big Tree. It just because said the, Big Re. No, 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 no. Because the logo in the middle of the the name was a giant tree, and that was supposed to be the T. Trust me, Kelly thought the exact same I thing, know. and I was like, "No, no, it's it's tree." I know <laughs> that it was supposed to be tree, but it looked like it just said "Big Re." I, I get, I get it because companies <laughs> like to be fucking really good with their fucking names as and some, their, their as designs. A, as a paid and published logo designer, that's bad design. Mm. <laughs> um, but so. Yeah. Uh, all the heroes bumble to fucking get this guy. Because they're too stupid to figure out that he's switching people's places. And then Barnaby figures it out and he decides to make himself a decoy. Which was actually really fucking smart. Cool, yeah. It was... Like, you just see him, like, his suit standing there, like, arms crossed. And then, like, he's, like, talking through, like, the, the suit speaker. And then you see him, like, out of suit or whatever like that, uh, like... Yeah. yeah, hitting it like he like stops him with a bell, and then like all the other heroes wanted to like go help him, but like Wild Tiger was like, no, 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 no. like give him the chance to do this himself, and then like he uh, he, he decided to, like he, yeah he decided to like watch him from the background and like take like recorded footage of like his heroic feat so I mean, he like could I mean, see what he did. He didn't do that on purpose. That was just something the suits did. Oh, okay. He was just watching over him because it's like, oh, if he fucks up, I gotta take responsibility. Yeah. Um, it was, it was still yeah. nice, though. Yeah, so, like, Barnaby saw the footage because Saito showed him, and he was like, he's like, oh, okay. And, like, he like, goes up to Wild Tiger, and he's like, yeah, you're not bad. And he's like, yeah, you're not bad yourself, you little fucking bastard. <laughs> I guess they'll so. stick with you for many more adventures to come. If that's not uh, friendship, what is? <laughs> hating uh, each other it, less and also fire emblem did a lot of flirting <laughs> oh yeah he called barnaby handsome and, and, butts. and yeah touched a lot of butt T touched sky high's butt and uh Rock like he's butt. like he's like i'm so scared and then he like lights his finger on fire and he's like oh that's better for a moment i thought that that was implying that he gets his power from touching people's butt that would be hilarious <laughs> Like that, that was would be what I thought they were going for. Like he, he would recharge to his fire ability by touching a butt. I feel like if that was the case, he would have had a sidekick. Also, it's yeah. also it's really hard to re <laughs> notice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> also, it's really it really weirds me out when you see Blue Rose out of costume because she's like blonde. So I'm just like, ah. Yeah, and also I don't know how the fuck what with her hair because like you think it's like a wig or like makeup yeah, or, I thought or it was something. A wig too, and then it just sort of transforms like she's a freak here. Yeah, you get this one scene where they all go into their fucking trailers to Henshin, which was awesome. 
And then you that's just, great. You just see Blue Rose's blonde hair like fly up and then curl up, and it's just blue. And I'm like, is that your power? Wait, maybe she was freezing her hair. Yeah, she's freezing her hair. Oh, that makes sense that would, now. That would um, that would be very uncomfortable. Yep. But I mean, she does have ice power, so it's safe to say she's resistant to it. I have ice hair. <laughs> it's true. Everybody sing the song of Blue Rose. Wow, that's a deep Grumps cut. Right? Very, um, very but yeah, nice. so that's that's Tiger and Bunny, the beginning. Like, this movie doesn't do the series justice, but, like, it, yeah, it's a good, it like... It's a good to get, like, casuals into it. So, like, you show them this movie, and it's like, okay, what do you think? And then, oh, or, but, like, basically, you just show them the first, like, three episodes, and, like, they'll be hooked. Yeah. Yeah, you watch the first three episodes, and you're immediately hooked on the show, so. It's so good. It's, it's visually nice. The characters are really fucking awesome and expressive, and they're full of personality, and... Like it's just like the 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 story's super good. It's like go go watch this fucking anime. <laughs> you know what? I'm even gonna say I like this better than Samurai Flamenco. Oh yeah, no, me too. Like I like what Samurai Flamenco's doing, but like I if we could talk about the entirety of Tiger and Bunny on this the Cast Ranger, I would love to. I'd be super down. Yeah. But maybe maybe we can maybe we can talk about the other movies because yeah. Uh, there's one where, like, they have, there's, like, a gravity superhero named uh, Golden Ryan, and he's voiced by Denev, actually. Yeah. So that's, My that's mom good. I want to watch the other movies, and I also want to watch the other movies. Do it. Yeah. They're so, good. yeah. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that uh, sometime down the road. I mean, my mom also wanted to watch more Knights of Chirnanog, and we haven't done that yet. Um, oh. Oh, so good. She just yep. loved everything about that. So much, <laughs> so much to watch and rewatch. So little time. Right. All right. Well, that has been Cast Ranger. Love, yep. love it. Good. That was fast. Great Saber episode. Great Zenkaiger episode. Great feature topic. Just great yep. all around. Oh yeah. With that said, <gasps> Jikai Nido Sentai Cast Ranger. For our final episode of Metal April 4, we will be talking about the Netflix reboot of Voltron, Legendary Defender. Oh, no. The first episode, which is the longer one, called The Rise of Voltron. Yes, uh, I, I've, I've seen it, but I have heard nothing but great things about this series. I've heard it's, it's very good, very emotional. Oh, it's so I've good. Heard it's very good, but the fandom is insane. I mean, that's any fandom. I guess that's fair. I, I, I watch what I watch. I don't give a shit about fandom. <laughs> Hashtag Team Keith. Hey, Toku also, fandom, I continue also, to listen to our podcast, please. Painful to see it. <laughs> yeah, I've watched the whole show. So good. All yep. right. So that said, thank you all once again for listening, watching, liking, favoriting, sharing, subscribing, hitting the bell, and being awesome. The primary source of our hijinks is castranger.podbean.com. From there, you can find our Facebook page with thumbnails I post early, our Twitter account, our Patreon, where you can pledge to help us make the show better, our Discord server, where you can chat with other cool Toku fans like everyone in our chat here, and listen live to our recordings Friday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, our merchandise store, where you can buy shirts and office supplies and masks and, ki and baby kigus with our emblems on it um yep and i think that's about it for now thank okay bye thank you once bye. again and see you next week <laughs> see ya <laughs> <laughs>